Good morning, students. So we are going to learn about fundamental equation of correct steering. So what is the use of what is, what is the need of a, a fundamental equation for correct steering? The, the need of this equation is that if you're not going to follow this type of correct steering equation, we may face problems like the vehicle is going to skid. It's not going to actually perfectly uh, have a turn, but it's going to skid. For example, if you want to have a right turn, it means vehicle has to turn in this manner about some center, right? About some center of rotation. So instead of just turning in this manner, the vehicle is going to skid even in this manner. This most of us, we must have already noticed as vehicle turns towards right, we are going to have a slight uh, lateral position drift also, which is in this direction. Now, to avoid this type of drifts, so we are going to have a fundamental equation of correct steering. So how is that going to happen? If you look at this diagram, usually whenever the vehicle is going in a straight manner, in a straight path. So at that time, we won't have, we won't face any type of problems because it is perfectly moving in a translatory motion. But whenever we are negotiating a turn, maybe a right turn or a left turn, at that moment, we will face some problems like there is a chance of skidding. So now for that reason, what we are going to do is, we are going to uh, see a look at these wheels now. You have front wheels and the back wheels. So front wheels are moving towards right. Uh, you can see that these are this, this is called inner wheel over here, inner wheel. So this is a inner wheel and here you can see it is a outer wheel. And now if you check here, I'm actually doing something like I'm going to draw perpendicular to the plane of the wheel, inner wheel, a line extended in this yellow, uh, using the yellow color. And then I'm going to draw, uh, draw a line which is perpendicular to the outer wheel which both meet at a point over here. And if you extend this uh, rear uh, axle and uh, perpendicular to the rear wheels, also they are going to meet at a same point. So what, what is this extension? Actually, if you look at here, whenever it's taking a right turn, the wheel, so the velocity direction of the wheel is in this direction. This is the direction of velocity of the wheel here. Uh, and then I'm going to draw a perpendicular to it. If you check this yellow is the perpendicular to the direction of the velocity. Even in the outer wheel also, this is the direction of the velocity over here, right? Yes. So I'm going to draw a perpendicular to the direction of the velocity. So whenever we draw perpendicular to the direction of velocity, what are we going to get? Just with this example, I'm going to say, see, this is the center of the rotation. Now, this is the velocity direction. Yes, this is the direction of velocity, which is always tangent if it is rotating clockwise. So this is the velocity direction. So if I draw perpendicular, where do they meet? They all meet at the center of the circle. So that's why we can call it center of rotation. We can call it center of rotation. So whenever I draw perpendicular to the velocity, then you will get the center of rotation. So now even here, if you look at the rear wheels, the velocity is actually in this direction because the vehicle is moving right. So velocity is in this direction. The uh, uh, wheel is rotating uh, in this manner, right? So if you draw perpendicular to these both, it's actually a same line. So I can say that this is the center of instantaneous center or the center of rotation. So you can call it I, okay? So now what is instantaneous center? We can assume that the entire configuration is being in perfect rotation about this point. It means this entire body is rotating about this point at this instant. Done. So now there is no chance of skidding in this configuration right now. So now I'm going to draw some reference lines. So I'm going to just extend these lines so that I can prove the condition for correct steering. I'm going to extend this line. Vertical, right? Yes, yes. Now I'm going to uh, measure the angle of this uh, rotation of the wheel. So I'll name that this is phi. Let's say this is phi. 
and here the angle turned is theta and uh, we know that this distance between the axle this distance between the axis is called as track width and let's name it with w it's track width w and then this length which you can see the vertical one over here this is the wheel base let's name it as l wheel base l or b okay b is better b and now we will give few names for this also for these pivoted points here you have a revolute joint so you call it uh, m let's call this n and let's call this o i'll just erase this inner wheel because now we all have established that this is called inner wheel this is called outer wheel and all outer wheel also i'm erasing okay excuse me okay okay done so now m n o and then i think this is more than sufficient now to have our derivation completed now if you look here <clears throat> you can see here also you can see that this angle is phi and this total angle is theta and uh, if you are taking a right turn then you can see that this theta is greater than 5 it means inner wheel has to uh, actually have more inclination than the outer wheel let's come to the part of derivation now now looking at the configuration i can say that cot phi is what adjacent by hypotenuse right sorry adjacent by opposite so adjacent is m o and opposite is o i this is cot phi and what is cot theta cot theta is n o by o i again adjusted by opposite now what is m o so from this cot phi m o is m n plus n o divided by o i now if you check properly m n by o i m n is w o i is b so i can write w by b plus n o by o i is cot theta now i have an equation proper equation which is cot phi minus cot theta which is equal to track width by wheel base so this is the condition of correct steering if any if any mechanism follows if a steering mechanism follows this equation then it is said to be a steering gear mechanism so we have to remember this formula this is cot phi phi is the outer wheel angle which is outer wheel tilt angle or outer wheel turning angle cot theta is inner wheel uh, turning angle w is wheel base w is track width and b is the wheel base so given theta w and b you can find out phi thank you